Government of India has set an ambitious target of achieving 1 lakh megawatt of solar power capacity by the year 2022. 60,000 megawatt is to be achieved through installing utility scale power plants and remaining 40,000 megawatt through solar rooftops. Agriculture sector which consumes around 23% of the total electricity generated in the country holds a great potential to fulfill our national solar target. Agriculture consumes 23% of the current electricity which is generated in the country. So this 130 gigawatt, which is the installed capacity of agriculture pumps right now, if we replace it with solar, so we, we'll, we'll save on the current 23% consumption. At the same time, we'll produce surplus power, which can help to achieve that 100 gigawatt target which the national government has set for to, uh, 2022. Therefore, if agriculture is solarized, it can become the biggest game changer. Many state governments, including Gujarat, are promoting solar pumps by means of heavy subsidy on capital investment. But promoting solar pumps in this manner has its own drawbacks. Groundwater depletion. In most parts of India, a solar pump will give farmers 2,300 to 2,800 hours of uninterrupted top quality daytime power. And if, and this power is totally free. And if farmers start using all this power to pump groundwater, then our aquifers will get finished in no time. The problem of over-exploitation of groundwater that we have been facing for the past 30-40 years faces a real threat, real and major threat of being accentuated if uh, solar pumps multiply in large numbers. So that is our real worry and we think that unless we change the way in which solar pumps are incentivized, this problem can actually become a Frankenstein monster. For for our country in the next 10 years or so. There are some other pressing issues related to agriculture sector. Mounting farm power subsidy. High carbon footprint. Unreliable power supply regime. There is a dire need of an innovative solution which addresses all of these issues. Dundi Solar Pump Irrigators Cooperative offers one such solution. Dundi is a small village in the Kera district of Gujarat. In May 2016, Dundi witnessed a new beginning when world's first solar pump irrigators cooperative commenced its operations. Members of this cooperative use solar energy to run irrigation pumps. They also pool surplus solar energy and sell it to the Madhya Gujarat Wiz Company Limited MGVCL, generating additional income. Thus, for them, solar power has become a remunerative crop. We have a diesel engine. We have a lot of solar energy. We have a lot solar energy. We have a lot of solar energy. We have a lot of MGVCL. Currently, this cooperative consists of six farmers who have installed a total capacity of 56.4 kilowatt. Incentivizing in this manner encourages farmers to use groundwater for irrigation judiciously, cutting down the groundwater depletion rate. With a total grid length of 2.8 kilometers, total cost of this project is rupees 52 lakhs, out of which rupees 5 lakhs is contributed by these six farmers. 
Under the Power Purchase Agreement with MGVCL, these six solar farmers have surrendered their right to apply for grid connection for 25 years. This will save the dead weight of subsidies on MGVCL. MGVCL is also claiming renewable energy certificates for all the 85,000 units generated. And through these RECs, MGVCL will earn at least Rs 2.97 lakhs every year. Solar panel uses energy from the sun to generate electricity and hence no carbon footprints. Solar pumps not only offset carbon emissions but they also help farmers to cut down on their huge diesel cost. Solar power is available during the daytime. Thus farmers can irrigate their lands during the daytime without depending on the grid power. Currently, MGVCL is offering a feed-in tariff of Rs 4.63 per unit. However, this tariff is being topped up with a green energy bonus of Rs 1.25 per unit and water conservation bonus of another Rs 1.25 per unit, thus making effective feed-in tariff to be Rs 7.13, which is sufficient for this model. Three new farmers are joining the cooperative, which will add a capacity of 15 kilowatt and a grid length of 2 kilometers. These farmers are contributing rupees 25,000 per kilowatt, which is five times the contribution made by existing farmers in the cooperative. <laughs> In India, 15 million electric tube wells with an average of 6.7 kilowatt connected load amounts to a mammoth 100 gigawatt of pumping capacity. If we solarize 1 gigawatt of load through the spiceway, we will generate 1.5 billion unit of green power every year and an additional income of 375 crores for the farmers. Save DISCOMs and state governments Rs 443 crore in farm power subsidies. Avoid groundwater draft of 1.7 billion cubic meter per year. Reduce carbon dioxide emission of around 1.23 million metric tons annually. Dodi Solar Pump Irrigators Cooperative presents an alternative strategy for using solar energy in transforming India's irrigation economy. Most states in India today are promoting solar irrigation pumps by providing farmers a very attractive capital cost subsidy. However, we believe that this may further accentuate the groundwater crisis that Western India faces. In our view, the Dhoondi type of solar pump irrigation cooperatives can solve a nexus, uh, a clutch of interconnected problems and it can make a great contribution to the water, energy, livelihood, climate uh, nexus that bewitches our country. Dhoondi type of uh, cooperative uh, demonstrate that by encouraging farmers to grow solar energy as a remunerative crop, you can create a new stream of income and put it in the hands of India's small farmers, which is not only uh, which can not only supplement farmers' income from farming, but can also insure farmer from the vagaries of uh, climate. During a drought, the solar income income from solar energy sales will increase. So. Income from solar energy sales can be counter-climatic. It can insulate farmer from droughts as well as from, from floods. Now, for the Dhoondi cooperative model to work on a larger scale, two things are important. Number one, the government needs to come up with a favorable policy that incentivizes farmers to invest in solar pumps. Number two, the distribution companies need to readily offer connectivity to, the, to solar farmers to the grid so that they can evacuate the surplus power. And number three, farmers need to be offered a remunerative price for the surplus energy sales.